Today we're going to discuss the first few lessons, lessons one through four, in module two for grade seven. This module deals with integers and rational numbers. The first thing I want to do is define the word integers. Integers simply means a number that's a whole number. You can put it on a number line and it's either positive or negative. So no fractions, no irrational numbers, um, just whole numbers on a number line, positive and negative. All right, so in lesson one, we are introduced to the integer game. And I'm going to do a little brief, quick synopsis of what the integer game is. It's a game that we play in two to four people, and each person gets a number of cards. It doesn't matter if it's two, three, four, or five. We play to different amounts every time. But basically, when you, it is your turn, you, you are dealt a hand of cards, and when it's your turn, you're going to pick up one card, either from a discard pile or from the stockpile. You pick up the card, you look at your hand, and you decide which card to discard. Then your turn is finished as soon as you discard a card into the discard pile, and it's the next person's turn. The goal of the game is to get the closest to zero as you possibly can. And you want to try and it's positive or negative. We take the absolute value of the value in, of the cards in your hand. So that's a, how briefly how we play the integer game. And integer pairs are integers and their opposites. So for example, one and negative one are an integer pair. And when you add one and negative one, you will get zero. If you add an integer and its opposite, you will end up with zero. So two, zero. And we use this fact in this lesson because when you have a, a hand of cards, let's say, these are your three cards. Well, let's do four. So your four cards. And we can add up things that are similar. So adding negative two and negative one gives me negative three. And if I add that to three, I get zero. And if I add another zero, I get zero. So that's a really good score. So trying to add up and keep numbers that will give us zero is going to really help us win the integer game. So if we have, for instance, a seven and a negative seven, that leads, leaves us with zero. So let's give me another, I'll give you another hand. Notice that in this hand, negative seven and seven give us zero. And then if we look at negative three on the number line, And we start at negative three and we go up to, we'll end up at negative one. So our score is negative one, but we take the absolute value, so it's one. All right, lesson two is about counting on a number line. So we can model addition on a number line a few different ways. And I don't have a number line, I will draw one. So let's do negative five and we'll go up to five. In the middle will be zero. And let me model a few problems for you. So let's do negative three plus seven. Every time we model, we start at zero. So if I go from zero to negative three, I use what's called a vector. A vector looks like an arrow, but a vector has magnitude and direction. It tells us which way to go, and it tells us how far to go. So in this case, it's going three, to the left, and that represents negative three. Positive seven would mean I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to end up at positive four. So your tail, your arrow should go tail the tip, and they should start at zero and end at your answer. All right, let's try another one. This time with three numbers. And sometimes I put the negatives in parentheses just so that it doesn't look like plus minus one. I want it to be clear that it's a negative, not a subtraction sign. 
All right, so we'll start at zero and go down to negative three. Then we're going to turn around and we're going to go up two. So we're going to go positive two. And then again, turn around and go negative one. So we will end up at negative one, negative two. Another way you could do this is you could pick the pairs that are the same. Negative three plus a negative one would be a negative four. And then we could just do the negative four plus two and we will get the same answer. And that is pretty much it from, from lesson two. We basically just learned how to count using a number line and how to add integers. Now, lesson three is really about understanding addition of integers. What does counting up mean? What does counting down mean? So when we count up on a number line, we're really adding. We count down, we're adding, but we're adding a negative number. So, I'm sorry, let's fix that. So if I did one plus two, I would go one and then go two and I would get three. That's counting up. Counting down would be like if I wanted to do one plus a negative two. So I would still go up one. This time I'm gonna go down two, one, two. And I end up at negative one. And we started out doing this like so, one and then one, two. We're using the little bumps. And you just move your finger between the numbers to add. But we want to notice is that as we add, we, we see a pattern that occurs. And that pattern is simply that if I have a positive and a negative number, So I have a positive three and then a negative two. My answer remains on the positive side and in fact it ends up being positive one. Notice the length of this arrow is three and the length of this arrow is two. So if I go three to the right and two to the left, I'm still going to be in the positive side and still on the positive side because three is bigger than two. And if I add two positive numbers together, then I'm going to get a bigger positive number. That's something we've always known. 10 plus 10 is 20. You get a bigger positive number. And that holds true for negatives. Negative 20 plus negative 20 is negative 40. Now in this case, when you add a smaller, a small number plus a small number, you're going to get a smaller number. So a negative plus a negative, no, I shouldn't say small, I should say negative. Negative plus a negative is a smaller negative number. So when you get a larger positive number, you get a smaller negative number. And we're going to start thinking in these terms, which can tend to be somewhat confusing, but we'll try to work through it. And then lastly, efficiently adding integers and rational numbers. Now, rational numbers that we add in, rational numbers, any fraction, any fraction. So, um, you know, half, two thirds, one seventh, um, anything that can be written as a fraction or a decimal. That's a rational number. So what I was talking about before is what we learned about today is that the distance of the arrows or the absolute value, we've talked about absolute value before, the distance of the arrows or the absolute value tell us how to do our subtraction. So if I have negative 4 plus 3, Notice that the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. That means my arrow is going to be 4 units long. And the absolute value of 3 is 3, meaning my arrow is going to be 3 units long. So if I go to the left 4 units and to the right 3 units, I'm still to the left 1 unit. I'm still negative. Notice this number has a larger absolute value. So it's, my answer will be negative. Okay. Let's try one where the positive number has a larger absolute value. So let's do negative 2 plus 4. 
notice the negative two arrow will be two units and four, the four arrow will be four units. You get two. But notice that this has the larger absolute value this time. That means my answer is positive because the positive number has larger absolute value. So we get this little trick that when signs are different, then we can take the difference, get it? Difference, difference, different, difference of the numbers, and then give it the value I give it the sign of the largest value. And you can kind of see that up top, and I'll try to highlight it for you. This is the same. So what we need to find is really this value. And that value would be if you take the total value and subtract the smaller value, you'll end up with that. And that's the difference. That's where difference comes in. So if you have a number where the signs are different, you subtract, you would you take the absolutes, subtract, and then give the answer the sign of the larger number, the larger absolute value number. So let's do an example of this little shortcut that we learned. So I'm going to do a big number because that's where it gets confusing. I can't do this one on a number line, and if I did, it would take me forever. But oh, sorry, I need a pen. I have negative 50, and I add 72. Notice my first number is negative, and my second number is positive. So I'm adding different signs, so then I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to take the absolute 50, sorry, 50 and 72. Those are the absolutes, and I want to subtract them. However, 50 minus 72 gets a little confusing, so let's do 72 minus 50. We can switch the order. It's okay, because we're just taking the difference. Now, 72 minus 50 gives me 18. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I switched it so I wouldn't have to borrow. This is 2, and then 2, so 22. So the difference is 22, and then notice is that the positive number has the bigger absolute value. So it's going to be a positive 22, and this is our final, final answer. Okay, and then when the signs are the same, it's actually much easier. When the signs are the same, you just add and give it the same number. So if I have a positive number plus a positive number, in this case, two plus three, I'll get a positive number, that's easy. When I have a negative number, let's say negative 4 plus negative 1, just ignore the signs, add as normal, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then they're both negative, so give it a negative sign. So we can use these tricks, and they're going to come in especially handy when we get to subtraction next. We can use this little trick, and same signs add, different signs subtract. If there's same sign, you keep the sign. If they're different, you keep the larger absolute value. And there's a little sign that we sang in class, and you can you can um, go on YouTube and just type in same signs add. A little song, catchy song, to help you remember what to do, and other little shortcuts that we've learned.